I can put on like when I'm a recruiter because I've been recruiting for 30 years. I, I, I tend to look for candidates who have uh, a high tolerance for ambiguity, which is not something you can put a little hat on and have a meter jump up, but, but somebody who, who can actually uh, understand that the world around them is not going to be predictable, but they're, they feel resilient and flexible enough to deal with that. Um, not at every school's full of chaos, but, but my experience overseas is that even if you've been in other overseas schools, you come to a new one, there's going to be blind spots. There's going to be cultural potholes that you won't even see. And so, you know, if you're a very systematic plan person with, with a low tolerance for ambiguity, I think you're just going to have a harder road to, to, to travel. I think uh, openness uh, to other cultures, uh, excitement and adventure is important because um, it's real hard to go to a place that's so, perhaps so different and then just say, well, I, I, want a, I want a McDonald's. I guess McDonald's you can get, but, you know, I want ice cream, and maybe you're in a place that doesn't have ice cream. So you have to be open to new foods, new cultures, and the whole culture shock uh, cycle of uh, adjustment that takes place. You know, if somebody's done that once anywhere, I, I see that as a very big plus because you know, they won't be blown out of the water when Thanksgiving comes and they're so lonely or they don't understand why people drive like that. Like those traffic lights, they don't seem to care. You know, the person doesn't obviously know that they're really just serving suggestions that, you know, if you're not sure what to do at this intersection, we suggest you might consider uh, stopping. But, uh, you know, there's so, there's so much that you learn your first time overseas. So if somebody's done that once, even as a tourist, as long as it's more than just a weekend, right? But if they've lived as a student exchange or they've gone for a month for uh, something overseas, all of that helps. Because it's one less thing that I have to worry about if I'm gonna bring them into my school. It's great if they know technology, if they're good at um, helping kids who don't have English as their first language. And if they have any experience with uh, accommodating learning differences. You don't have to be a special ed teacher, but if you've had a course or some experience dealing with the range of human, human diversity, because a lot of the smaller schools overseas don't have a special ed program. They just have a lot of teachers who try to, try to uh, accommodate the children they have. So uh, I have this in my mind, an imaginary window that every teacher looks through into a classroom, and it's their window of accommodation. And, and you know, when you're when you're a beginner teacher, you may have a fairly small window, depending on your experience and your training. But the wider that window is, the more kids that you can see in, in there and say, oh, I know how to handle that, or I have an idea. That's really important. So tolerance for ambiguity, ESL or EAL, technology, cultural experience, and a wide range of accommodation. Those would be the things I look for.